Om Namah Shivaya students. Today we are going to start with class 11 history section 4 towards modernization theme 11 part 7 path to modernization. Students in this session number one, the rise of communist party in China. Number two establishing a new democracy 1949 to 65 assignment to be completed in theme 11 part 7. Rise of Communist Party of China When the Japanese invaded China in 1937, the Yumingdang retreated. The long and exhausting war weakened China. Prices rose 30% per month between 1945 to 1949 and utterly destroyed the lives of the ordinary people. Rural China faced two crises, one ecological with soil uh, exhaustion, deforestation and floods, second a socio-economic one caused by exploitative land tenure system, indebtedness, primitive technology and poor communication. Now the Communist Party of China had been founded in 1921, soon after the Russian Revolution. The Russian success exercised a powerful influence around the world. Leaders such as Lenin, Trotsky went on to establish the Comintern on the Third International in March 1918 to help bring about a world government that would end exploitation. The Comintern and the Soviet Union supported communist parties around the world, but they worked within the traditional Marxist understanding that revolution would be brought about by the working class in cities. That means that favored the growth of industries. It's Initial appeal across national boundaries was immense, but it soon became a tool for Soviet interest and was dissolved in 1943. Mao Zedong, who emerged as a major Communist Party China leader, took a different path by basing his revolutionary program on the peasantry. His success made the Communist Party of China a powerful political force that ultimately won against the Guomindang. Mao Zedong's radical approach can be seen in Jiangxi in the mountains where they camped from 1928 to 1934, secure from Guomindang attacks. A strong peasants council was organized united through confiscation or taking over and redistribution of land. Mao, unlike other leaders, stressed the need for an independent government and an army. He had become aware of women's problems and supported the emergency of rural women's association, promulgated a new marriage law that forbid arranged marriages stopped purchase or sale of marriage contracts and simplified divorce. These are the reforms made by Mao Zedong for the women and their suffering. In a survey in 1930 in Zunwa, Mao Zedong looked at everyday commodities such as salt, soya beans, at the relative strength of the local organization, at petty traders and craftsmen, ironsmiths and prostitutes, and the strength of the religious organization to examine the different level of exploitation that is taking place. He gathered statistics of the number of peasants who had sold their children and found out what price they received. Boys were sold for 100-200 yuan, but there were no instances of sale of girls because the need was for hard labor. 
not sexual exploitation. Now, it was on the basis of these studies that he advocated ways of solving social problems in China. The Gumingdang blockade of the communist Soviet forced the party to seek another base. This led to go on what came to be called as Long March in China. 6,000 grueling and difficult miles to Sanzi. Here, in their new base in Yan'an, they further developed their program to end war lordism, carry out land reforms and fight foreign imperialism. This won them a strong social base. In the difficult years of the war, the communist and the Dang worked together. But after the end of the war, the communists established themselves in power and Dang was defeated. Now here this map shows the communist area that has been marked in the yellow patches. These are the communist areas and uh, the mountainous main routes of the long march. You can see the symbols over here, the symbol of the mountains that marks the main route of the long march. Other routes are marked in dots. This is the map showing the long march. This photograph of the soldier on the long march you can see over here alongside reclaiming waste land. That means they are again reclaiming the wasteland and trying to make it into the cultivable land and find a new base for them. Establishing the new democracy 1949 to 65. The People's Republic of China government was established in 1949. It was based on the principle of the new democracy, an alliance of all social classes, unlike the dictatorship of the proletariat and the Soviet Union, said it had established. Critical areas of the economy were put under government control and private enterprise and private ownership of the land were gradually ended. This program lasted till 1953 when the government declared that it would launch a program of socialist transformation. The Great Leap Forward movement launched in 1960, uh, 1958 was a policy to galvanize the country to industrialize rapidly. People were encouraged to set up steel furnaces in their backyards. In the rural areas, people's communes where land would be collectively owned and cultivated were started. By 1958, there were 26,000 communes covering 98% of the farm population. Now, this term was used by Karl Marx to stress that the working class would replace the repressive government of the property class with a revolutionary government and not a dictatorship in the current sense. Proletariat, the meaning of the proletariat is this. Now Mao was able to mobilize the masses to attain the goals set by the party. His concern was with creating a socialist man who would have five loves, fatherland, people, labor, science and public property. 
mass organizations were created for farmers, women, students, and other groups. For instance, All China Democratic Women's Federation had 76 million members. The All China Students Federation 3.29 million members. Now these objectives and the methods did not appeal to everyone in the party. In 1953-54, some were urging for more attention to the industrial organization and economic growth in China. Li Saoqi and Deng Xiaoping tried to modify the commune system as it was not working efficiently. The steel produced in the backyard furnaces was unusable industrially that is why the modification has to be made assignments that has to be done in chapter 11 part 7 is as follow number 1 write a brief description on the life of the mao zedong number 2 when did the communist revolution took place in china what was its effect on the USA in your notebook in the next session section 4 towards modernization theme 11 part 8 path to modernization we will continue with om namah shivaya